This is part four of five on chapter four, general features of cells. In this section, we're gonna be looking at the endomembrane system. And the endomembrane system consists of the organelles listed in the middle of the slide. So we're gonna talk about the nucleus, the nuclear envelope, lysosomes, proxosomes, a vacuole found in plant cells, the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi apparatus, and the plasma membrane. So just those organelles listed here. And these organelles, they may be directly connected to each other, so they could be continuous, or they're part of the endomembrane system because they can pass materials from one part to the other using vesicles. I'm gonna start off by talking about the nucleus, specifically the nuclear envelope. So the nuclear envelope is the membrane that makes up the nucleus. So if we look at our nucleus, it's in the middle of our eukaryotic cell. The nuclear envelope, it's made up of phospholipids and it also has nuclear pores that allow things to go in and out of the nucleus. Inside of the nucleus, you have chromatin, which is made up of DNA and proteins that are associated with the DNA. And then you also have a structure called the nucleolus. And that's shown as kind of the bluish, purple, round ball in the middle of your nucleus. Like I just mentioned, the nucleus contains the chromosomes, which are composed of DNA and associated proteins that help to wrap up that DNA into their chromosome structures. The DNA and protein together, when it's kind of a diffuse string-like substance, is called chromatin. Also, inside of the nucleus, you have the nu nuclear matrix. This is protein filament network that's going to help organize these chromosomes. So your chromosomes, they have to be distinct. They're non-overlapping. They're own, in their own little territory. So this nuclear matrix helps to organize all of that. The function of the nucleus is to um, protect the genetic material, to organize the genetic material. It's used for replication of the genetic material and also expression. So the nucleus, the main functions have to do with that DNA or that chromatin that's inside of it. In addition to those functions, we also have the assembly of ribosome subunits. And ribosomes, they're responsible for protein synthesis, but the subunits are created in the nucleus. These ribosome subunits are specifically created in the nucleolus, that region inside of the nucleus. So this is where we have our RNA, which is ribosomal RNA. It's one type of RNA. That's where that's created. The nucleolus also creates the ribosome subunits. And the rRNA and those ribosome subunits are going to be put together to make the whole ribosome. Outside of our nucleus, we're going to have a structure called an endoplasmic reticulum. A lot of times the endoplasmic reticulum, it's abbreviated as just ER. So the ER, it's a network of membranes and they form these flattened fluid filled tubules. And the endoplasmic reticulum, it can have a variety of functions. There's actually two different types we're gonna be looking at. And they're highlighted in red. So we have the rough ER and we also have the smooth ER. These two different types of ER, the rough and the smooth, they're named based on how they look under a microscope. The rough ER is actually studded with ribosomes, so it looks kind of rough when you look at it under a microscope, whereas a smooth ER is not studded with ribosomes, so it looks smooth, just a smooth membrane under the microscope. We're going to start off with looking at the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And like I just said on the previous slide, the rough ER is studded with ribosomes. Remember, ribosomes, they help in protein synthesis. So it makes sense that one of the functions of the rough ER is that it's involved in protein synthesis. It's also involved in sorting these proteins. Some of these proteins that are created, they can be inserted into the ER membrane, 
And then a lot of times those proteins can go through a process called glycosylation. And glycosylation, it just means that you're going to attach a carbohydrate to a protein or you can attach a carbohydrate to a lipid. So glyco is just um, another prefix meaning carbohydrate. The smooth ER, like I showed you in the picture, lacks ribosomes, so it looks smooth. The smooth ER has different functions. It can help with detoxification of the cell. It breaks down different toxins. Carbohydrate metabolism. It can help with calcium balance in the cell. And then the fourth function, it can synthesize and modify lipids. So that's the really important one, the modification and creation of lipids for the smooth ER. Next to our endoplasmic reticulum, we have another structure called the Golgi apparatus. And if you look at the diagram on the right, the Golgi apparatus, it's the blue structure in the cell. So the Golgi apparatus is kind of similar to the endoplasmic reticulum. So again, we have a stack of flattened membrane-bound compartments. And there's vesicles that are going to transport materials from one compartment to another through this Golgi apparatus. As those vesicles transport um, proteins through the Golgi apparatus, the Golgi apparatus has three main functions. It can secrete the protein, so it can send it off to where it's supposed to go. It can process the protein, so it can cut the protein up. It can do additional glycosylation. It can add carbohydrates to the protein. And it also can sort the proteins as well as they move through the Golgi apparatus. This slide is showing the relationship between the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi apparatus. The rough endoplasmic reticulum it's studded with ribosomes, so it's the purple structure on the left with the little orange ribosomes attached to it. Remember, the rough ER is responsible for synthesizing proteins. These proteins are then put into vesicles, and those vesicles are going to travel to the Golgi apparatus, the blue structure in the middle. While the protein moves through the Golgi apparatus, it can be processed. And once it's processed, it's going to come out of the other side of the Golgi apparatus. And then that cargo can be released outside of the cell, for example, or that vesicle can become another structure. And we'll get to that in a little bit. This whole pathway, starting with the rough ER and creating the protein, moving that protein through the Golgi apparatus, it's called the secretory pathway up at the top. As your protein goes through the Golgi apparatus, some of the types of processing that can happen, so you can still have more glycosylation. So remember that can also happen in the rough ER. You have a carbohydrate that attaches to your protein, or you take a carbohydrate, attach it to a lipid. That's that glycosylation. The other type of processing, the one where you can cut that protein into smaller parts, is called proteolysis. So proteo refers to protein. Lysis means to cut up into smaller pieces. So proteolysis, cutting up your protein. Some of the vesicles that are coming out of the Golgi apparatus after all that processing, they're going to become lysosomes. So lysosomes, they contain a specific enzyme, which is a type of protein, called a hydrolase enzyme. This acid hydrolase enzyme performs hydrolysis. Remember, the hydrolysis reaction, that's how we break down carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, nucleic acids. So we talked about that in chapter 3. So those carbohydrates, for example, they enter into the lysosome, and then that enzyme is going to break that carbohydrate back into its monomers. So it's kind of recycling, breaking down these large biological molecules we've looked at. Other lysosomes, they can do autophagy. So they'll actually recycle worn out organelles through a process called endocytosis. 
So we haven't talked about mitochondria yet, but mitochondria can wear out. And then once they're worn out, the cell can actually do autophagy and recycle those mitochondria using the lysosomes. Another type of structure you can find in cells are called vacuoles. One type of vacuole, the central vacuole, is only found in plants. And it's used for water storage or it can store certain pigments, so coloring. Um, it also helps to support that cell. Other types of vacuoles that you can find in animals include contractile vacuoles. These are used to expel excess water from the cell. And then the third type, phagocytic vacuoles in protist. And white blood cells help to break down um, bacteria or items that shouldn't be around the cell. This slide is just showing different types of vacuoles. So on the left, we have a central vacuole in a plant cell that helps to provide support for the cell. In the middle, we have a contractile vacuole that will fill up with water, and then it will contract and push the water back out of the cell. And then the third type of vacuole, we can have food vacuoles that can break down food or break down bacteria that have invaded the body. Another type of structure is called the proxosome. Proxosomes, they have a general function to catalyze or break down certain toxic molecules in the cell. So proxosomes, they help protect the cell from different toxins. And these proxosomes, they contain certain enzymes, so type of protein, that do these different functions. So because they contain a protein, they contain that enzyme, they start off in the rough ER, and then the little vesicle breaks off with that enzyme, and then that enzyme helps to turn that vesicle into a peroxisome. The last part of the endomembrane system is the plasma membrane. And we looked at this when we looked at the prokaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells also have a plasma membrane. So remember, plasma membrane is just that boundary between the cell and the extra nuclear environment. So it tells you what's inside the cell versus what's outside the cell. And the functions of your plasma membrane, we're going to be looking at membrane transport, so moving things in and out of the cell. The plasma membrane can also have cell signals on it, so it has little receptors that tell um, other cells they send information to it. And then the third function is that the plasma membrane can help with cell adhesion, so helping cells stick together to form tissues. This is showing those three different functions of your plasma membrane. So if you look, we have a reddish protein towards the left hand. That's a protein that's used for cell signaling. So that protein can detect certain molecules outside of the cell, and then that can cause a reaction inside of the cell. The blue protein is a membrane transport protein, and you have little purple glucose molecules, so little sugar molecules. The cell is actually bringing those sugar molecules into the cell, so it's transporting sugar across the membrane. And then on the very right, we have two kind of greenish proteins, and that is showing cell adhesion. So we have two different cells that are attached to each other. So these are your three types of proteins you can have in your plasma membrane. This section looked at that endomembrane system. So remember, we're looking at eukaryotic cells. They have a nucleus that has that chromatin inside of it, that DNA. And then we looked at different parts of the endomembrane system. So our endoplasmic reticulum, our Golgi apparatus, the lysosomes, proxosomes, the vacuoles, and then finally we looked at the plasma membrane.